Okay, well you should have just installed Photoshop and now that Photoshop is installed, when you first open Photoshop it's going to open up like this. Now the one thing that um, we'll say about Photoshop and the kind of the differences between Photoshop and Illustrator because I get that question quite a bit is you know why would you use Photoshop compared to Illustrator? The thing that I always say is that I like to use Photoshop to edit pictures that have already been taken. And I use Illustrator to create th uh, new things from scratch. So if I'm trying to just edit something that I've already uh, done, edit a picture that I've already taken, I'm going to choose Photoshop for that. That actually kind of uh, frames how we want to go about um, starting any projects in Photoshop. Since I'm going to be working on a picture that I've already taken, most of the time what I want to do then is I'm going to come over to the open button and I'm gonna go ahead and open anything that I've already done and open it that way. I probably am not gonna to too often do the create new, um, although there might be times. Most of the time I'm just gonna go ahead and hit open and I'm gonna open up the picture that I have uh, wanted to work with. To start, if you go to our class page, you'll see that there are three pictures that I have added onto our class website. And the reason that I chose these pictures and want you to start with these is I know that these pictures don't have any copyrights on them. So I want you to go ahead and just pick one of these pictures. If you click on the picture, it will enlarge it to give it a little bit better resolution. And then you can go ahead and do a two finger click on it and hit save image as. When you do that, just make sure that it has a name that makes sense and that it's going to go to a folder where you know where it is and you know how to get back and find it. You can go ahead and hit save and then we're going to navigate back to Photoshop and we're going to go ahead and hit open. We're going to go to our picture that we just downloaded and we're going to go ahead and open it. And when you first open up your picture you'll see a number of different things. So the thing that I want to start with today is over here on the side some of the tools that you'll most commonly use. A couple notes about these tools is if you put your cursor over them and then just let it hover in place you'll see that it tells you the tool name and that way if you're not sure what the name is as I mentioned a tool you can just kind of hover over top of it and you'll see what the name of that tool is. A couple other things just to point out as well over here on this side. You'll see that there's what's called the layers panel. Layers are very important and keep track of the layers that you're working on. Make sure you know what layer you have selected. Sometimes you'll be trying to do something and you won't notice that you actually have a different layer selected and it's not working correctly because you don't have the right layer selected. Also notice that right now my picture is locked so that I can lock things and unlock things if I don't necessarily want to change something I can lock it. If I want to be able to work with it and change it I can go ahead and click on the lock and it will allow me to work with it as well. And then this little eye uh, icon allows me to know if that layer is visible or not. So if I click on the eye it hides that layer. Clicking in that box again brings that layer back as well. So I can do a few things with this. I want to start off first of all with the move tool. So using the move tool, pretty simple. I can just click on my picture. I can move it around. I can position it into place. You'll also notice that as you move it, you get these little pink lines as well. And you'll be able to see when you have it aligned perfectly back into the center, and when you have the pink lines going across both vertically and horizontally. Another tool that we want to make sure to take a look at is the zoom tool. And the zoom tool, just like you would expect, allows you to zoom in and out. Wherever I position my uh, magnifying glass is going to be where it specifically zooms in. And then if, um, as you kind of click and drag both back and forth, it will zoom in and out. On a Mac, you can do the same thing by use, doing the pinch to zoom and that will allow you to zoom in and out as well. Finally, the last thing that I want to mention is we can do a pretty quick transform by hitting Command and T on our keyboard. 
when you hit Command T on the keyboard, T as in Tom, you'll notice that you get these squares around the edges. And as I get those squares, I can do a few different things. I can drag it down so that it scales it down. If I hit Shift while I do that, I can actually then flatten it out. I can kind of squish it in, and I can change the proportions of the picture. But I have to hit Shift in order to do that. Even dragging on this uh, middle one scales it proportionally. Right? So hitting Shift will allow you to change the proportion of the picture. If I move my cursor so that it just goes above the corner, you'll notice that the arrow turns to kind of like a curved side to side arrow. And once I have that, I can rotate my picture. So I can rotate the picture around, I can position it so that it's going a different direction, and I can uh, change the angle of it as well. Once I'm happy with the way that my picture is transformed, then I can come up to the top and I've got these two buttons up here. The button with uh, the circle with the line through it will discard any changes that I've made and the check mark will apply those ch uh, changes that I've made. In this case I'm just going to hit the cancel button to take those off and put it back to how it was. So those are the first two tools that we wanted to look at. Two pretty basic tools, the move tool and the zoom tool and then the transform button. Those are some pretty common tools that we'll use quite a bit.